Assets in Flame, such as PNG images, should be stored in Assets slash Images. In the pubspec.yaml file of your normal Flutter project, uh, go into the section for Assets and then define the Assets slash Images folder within your project. It has to be uh, this specific folder. So it's assets slash images, and then you're going to need to run flutter pub get again. So in VS code, I selected that plus folder icon, and then I created the assets slash images folder. We're not going to do testing in this tutorial, so I'm going to delete the test folder. Next, assemble your game character or your game assets. I'm going to use Calmary, which is available under the Creative Commons. So take a PNG file and drop it into the assets.images. I'm going to call my character girl.png. For simplicity in our storyline, I'm going to create another character for called boy.png. So these are just two PNG files. These files are actually 1200 by 1200 pixels, so they're pretty large. Uh, if you're actually putting into game, you might want to reduce the size of it that's you know more closely matches what you need in your specific game. After I copied the graphics into my asset slash images folder, I'm going to run flutter pub get again just to be safe. I'm not sure if the step is needed. We're gonna load the graphics files as sprite components. Sprite component is a keyword from Flame. It's a specific class and it's the most why they use class and flame that we're going to use to manipulate the game objects. So it's sprite component is a data type. I'm going to call it girl initially, and then I'm going to instantiate it as a sprite component. I'm going to put it above the onload method here so that I can easily access it in a future method called update. But right now, let's just do girl equals sprite component. And that variable girl, now we can attach the actual graphics file to it, as well as the size of the girl. You could actually use girl.sprite and then load the sprite. I'm going to use something called a cascade operator, which is a set of two dots. This is just a shortcut. Uh, it's a shorthand abbreviated version so that it's instead of doing girl.sprite and then girl.x, you can just do girl.sprite equals load sprite. Uh, there's no comma at the end of this. So the load sprite is from flame, and then girl.png is the name of your file. So for the next property, I'm going to use dot dot again. The property is size. This is part of the sprite component. I'm going to use a vector 2 uh, for 100 uh, by 100. So this is the size and the x and y coordinates of the girl. Then on line 18, the reason that it's a red squiggly line is that I need to put a weight. So you have to wait for the graphic to finish loading from the disk. After the properties for the girl are set up, the minimum is the sprite and the size, you can now add the girl component to the game. Add is a keyword from Flame. So now let's run our game and it should appear on our mobile app. Beautiful, the girl now appears in the upper left hand corner. So the, she's going to be at zero, zero, because I didn't specify the X or Y coordinates of the sprite when I loaded it. Girl's a little small, so I'm going to increase the X axis first, just to show you how to adjust the size of it. So I'm using hot restart, not hot reload. Um, and so she's overly wide, because she should be in a one-to-one -one ratio. I just did that to show you that you can change the X and Y coordinate a size of the girl independently. So this is under line 19 of the size property. Her actual position on the mobile app screen is controlled also by um, numbers. Uh, y would be the up and down. So from the top of the mobile app going down, should be placed 100 pixels down if we set Y to 100. And there she is, the top of her head is no longer right at the top of the screen. The basic concept here for game development is to use the library uh, sprite component and from there you can there's a whole bunch of methods that we can access and properties. The way to get your graphic into a sprite component is to first instantiate a sprite component, calling it girl, above the onload method. And inside the onload method, you can then load the sprite and set the size. As a challenge, go ahead and pause the video 
and add a boy to the mobile app screen. I already have the boy graphics added in the previous step. So I have this in the assets dot or assets slash images folder on my local computer. The boy is simply a 1200 by 1200 pixel a PNG file. So I'm going to create another sprite component for the boy. So sprite component boy equals sprite component. So I do need to instantiate another object. And then the process will be the same as adding the girl in. So we'll start off with uh, the variable name, which is boy. And we'll use a cascade operator. So again, it's those two dots. And it's just a shortcut for boy.sprite equals that. And then boy.size equals the size of it. So we're going to use await, the special keyword that which is needed to tell the application to wait until the graphic is actually finished loading from the local storage. And then we'll add the size, which is a vector two. Um, this is simply how Flame uh, positions objects on, on the screen. It's uh, usually only in uh, two vector points. The Y axis is the up and down orientation. So the girl is 300 pixels high herself and she's 100 pixels down from the top of the screen. So the bottom edge of the girl's graphic is about 400 pixels. So we're gonna put the boy below that. In the next video, we'll change the orientation of the Android uh, mobile app so that it's in landscape mode. We'll also use the size property of flame game to find the edges of the screen. In addition to applying a background to the uh, back of the mobile app screen, Congratulations on getting this far in your programming game development journey. Subscribe to the channel as we have been more tutorials to help you explore fun game development with Flutter and Flame.